Arthur. Yeah. Before the ducks, uh, before the frog being talkative again, tell me what what did you want to do at Luma? What was your aim with this exhibition? Well, Judith, you know me well enough to know I don't have any aims. <laughs> Uh, you know, I got an opportunity, Mai, who obviously I know really well, to say, hey, look, let's, let's do a show at Luma. And I was like, okay, cool. You know, it wasn't much more complicated than that. I, um, you know, like a lot of people coming out of the pandemic, you know, I've sort of been holed up, you know, for a few years now. And I've been working on a lot of new things, um, in particular this work of Ghidra, which I've worked on for a little over, you know, two years, which I probably is about as long as I've worked on anything you know one single piece and i don't know in some ways at least the form is very different from things that i've done before so why 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 uh, is it different why is it different um i like, don't know could you describe it or oh uh yeah well how is it different it's um i guess one of the things that a lot of people maybe would associate my work with and and I don't know, I guess I was a little disturbed by being characterized as like being an archival or found footage artist or something like that. I mean, which I, I don't I don't really have a problem with that, with that work. I mean, or working like that. I, it's, 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 it's fun. It's an exciting way to work. There's a certain level of immediacy and the work is inherently going to be connected to other people just because you're using, you know, a lot of different source material. So I like that I'm going to continue to do work like that. But I, I guess it's very resistant to the idea that it's some sort of reductive sort of take on what I do, you know, as if like the effect of what I do is completely bound up with the fact that I'm using found footage. Um, I was just showing somebody something just this morning, like uh, one of the curators actually, and they were like, oh yeah, so you, did you take these pictures? And I was like, and I ended up just counting all the pictures in this particular piece and like 85% of them were images that I had taken myself, mm. even though they would typically be classified as found footage, you know what I mean? Yeah. But that's the same thing with Love is the Best. There's a lot of things in it that I shot that people because they don't know that's my son, that's my daughter, that's my mom, you know what I mean? So, but the whole idea was this, in some ways, I guess, one aspect of a Ghidra was that, you know, I just wanted to make something that couldn't be, in a sense, narrowly defined as archival in some way, you know? That in fact, it doesn't have any photography in it at all, in the sense that it's all computer generated, you know? So there's no even, me going out with a movie camera and shooting it, you know, which I guess would be classified as found footage, but, you know, so, and then, but at the same time, not be a disavowal of the things that I've done in the past, you know, I don't like cut myself off from my own best impulses because, you know, somebody decided that they want to like, you know, calcify it as who you are, you know, um, no, I'm but interested uh, in a lot of different things, you yeah. know, so yeah, I mean, for whatever reason, you know, people associate with me with certain things that I've done, but it's not all I'm interested in, so. But you speak a lot about pain in this exhibition. In this, in this exhibition? You yeah. mean like more so than usual? No. Yeah, I was gonna say. I don't mind about usual. Yeah. If, if I'm a visitor, I come to discover your work, what I see is pain and yeah. violence. Yeah, for sure. But that's typical of my work, I would sure. say. You know, and that's pretty typical of my work. I mean, death. I mean, has there ever been an artist or a creative person with death in the titles more than me? <laughs> it's no, it's no secret, you know. But um, I don't know. It's like it's a lot of times, I think it's not literal death. Oftentimes, it's more existential death, or you know, a metaphysical death, maybe even. But uh, and do you have some hope? Do I have some hope? Yeah. Of course, I got the whole, I'm still breathing. You know, despite the fact that my best friend in the world, Greg Tate, died, you know, in the last five months. Yeah, I mean, you know, life kind of goes on. I mean, painfully, but it goes on. And, um, you know, I'm thinking, it's funny, like, for artists that I would, like I'm saying for myself, it's just who... You know, death has hovered around my work for a long time. It was still such a shock, you know, for him to die. It's like, 
it made me wonder if my relationship to death as, as it has you know constituted itself my work was almost like more literary than anything but you, you know, don't so, say his name greg tate yeah so the legendary brain machine genius mr greg tate uh who i've known i knew and continue to know but we've been friends for the last 40 something years uh, so, you know, most of my life at this point, uh, I still remember meeting him, but nevertheless, it's like amazing, you know, you get to a point in your life and you meet a person that you really get on with and you think, oh man, I wish I had known this person early, <laughs> like you're 20 and you're thinking early would have been, you know, you know, teenager or early teens or something, but yeah, he's just, he's, uh, you know, I've said to people it was the love of my life, you know, so. And uh, so now, what, what, what do you think about? What is your next project? Projects? You know, I always have multiple things going, you know. Like on the art project thing, there's some longer term things. I guess I wouldn't necessarily... It'd be hard to talk about them because it's still sort of formulating. I definitely feel like I've reached some conclusion to... A first stage or something like that you know I think a Ghidra and some other things the rails that I'm starting to make more are like starting to look towards you know the next mm. phase of work um, again not a disavowal of anything I've done before but you know hopefully building on the things I've done before and also my film company you know yes which, which you were speaking like, last time about yeah. your desire for fiction yeah, well, yeah, for sure. It's uh, more than, you know, a desire for it. It's actually happening. We're about a year and a half in uh, at this point with our film company, Sunhouse, and we have a bunch of things in the works. We've signed multiple deals with different entities and stuff. So, you know, really excited about where we are. So I would say in the next, I don't know, 12 months or so, we'll start to see things. Like come what? Out. Like what? <laughs> Uh, I don't know if I can necessarily. I, mean, I don't know if I'm supposed to be sending names of the things in public yet. Yeah, so. but it, it would be movies from you or from oh, other people. Oh, television show. There's a couple. Yeah, other people who work with us. Like we have a couple of television shows that are, you know, in development and well, not beyond in development. Set to you know go sign deals. We have. I don't know six or seven different. Wow. Film properties that we've developed over the past year and a half you know and what what's the, what's writers. special about this project why do you want to shelter <laughs> <laughs> but what's special about all of them what's common what's common um well look this is something you know i mean i've said a thousand times like one of my big ambitions you know always is to make cinema like the music like black music you know so mm. and for a long time at least 30 years, I sort of imagined a film company that was structured, you know, to um, to manifest, to manifest this. And I always said, like, like Motown, you know, I was one of the film companies yeah. that was like Motown or like Atlantic Records or like, I don't know, Factory Records, you know, uh, a place where creative people could... Um, you know, outliers, like outliers, like people who typically might have a difficult time doing feature films just because so much of making a feature film is convincing, you know, people who control the purse strings to turn over, you know, millions of dollars to you. Like, I mean, that's like standard practice in film. Like in art standards, you know, it's like a very, very rare group of people who could even imagine doing anything that was on cost over a million dollars, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. um, so you make things possible? Yeah, I like to think so. I mean, I mean, we're very, very, very confident about what we're doing. I think perhaps initially people were just scratching their heads, like, you know, Arthur J. for and the film company, like, what is about, even though my background is film, you know? So, but I think for a while people were trying to I mean, you know, artists making films don't have a very 
a very good track record. <laughs> There's some, been some really amazing artists who made really terrible films, like really bad. Like, or oh, the contrary. Excuse me? It can be the contrary, too. I mean, there's a rare, rare exception that a good artist would make a decent movie, you know. Julian Schnabel. Julian Schnabel would be at the top of the list. But it's just, I mean, the fact that we agree Julian Schnabel is a pretty good filmmaker is like, it's just evidence of how rare it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, not to cast any shade or anything, but... Um, Yeah, you know, I mean, I think most artists under a certain age were, uh, over a certain age were like, you know, profoundly impacted by movies and television and stuff. So it would seem like something that would be a natural transition, but it's very rare. I mean, the greatest artist who made films, obviously, is Andy Warhol. But his films hardly even classify as films in any sort of normative Hollywood kind of sense. Mm. Even though they're sort of obsessed with The values of Hollywood, it's, you know, it's such a genius, avant-garde reconceptualization of what a movie is. But, but in terms of actually an artist, you know, having movies in the theater and things like that, it's it's, it's pretty rare, you know. So, so I think people. So you are inventing something. Inventing something. I don't know what I'm. You inventing. try. Yeah, I'm always trying to vent something. <laughs> uh, no, but again. with with the people you are working with in this company, you try to invent something? Yeah, absolutely. We're trying to invent like a mechanism, a tool, an instrument that can uh, just grind this stuff out. Like not just be, you know, once an occasion. It's not a vanity project. It's a real film company. We like to see ourselves as a studio, even though people might laugh at that because we obviously don't have the money right now to green light things, but our, our ultimate goal is to be able to identify projects and talented people and just say, yeah, well, let's do this. And we don't have to, you know, have it signed off on by anybody else. I mean, that's the goal. Merci, monsieur. Oh, okay. That's good. Now